Good evening. So tonight I'm going to talk about how to build robust reproducible analytical pipeline. So why robust? So there are two things um, to make a pipeline robust. Well, the first um, is kind of redundant with reproducible because it's uh, dealing with your computational environment. So to make sure that your pipeline is robust, you need to make sure it's reproducible. And making sure it's reproducible for this, you need to basically deal with the computational environment. What I mean with that is that um, you can't afford to, for example, update your packages or update R, and then all of a sudden the re your, you cannot find the results anymore that you were finding before, right? So you need to be sure that your project is self-contained, is isolated, and there are several ways to deal with that. Uh, you can use RENV, so this will help you have project-specific libraries of packages or a li yeah, libraries of packages. So for each project, you have a separate library with potentially different versions uh, from a library to another, from a project to another. Uh, that's one thing. You can use Docker or you can do what I do, which is I use Nix. Uh, I've talked about Nix several times on this channel, so I will not talk about it again. I just want to show you the uh, Nix file that I use. Um, so to, to create this default.nix file, I use the uh, R package Ricks that uh, I wrote with uh, Philip Baumann. Uh, this package is not on CRAN yet, but it will hopefully be soon on CRAN. And what it allows you to do is you can write this function that is called Ricks. You can say, well, I want version of R so and so. I want the packages uh, that I need for my analysis. I want um, tech packages as well you can add. I want a GitHub package, etc., etc. Run this code. And what you get is you get this file, and then you can use the Nix package manager to build a completely reproducible environment that will um, that you can then use to run your pipeline. And this environment is completely reproducible. It will come with this version of R and all the packages that are current at that time of uh, the release of that version of R, right? Uh, you can also install specific versions of packages if you really want to, you can do that. Rix allows you to do that, um, that works. But usually you should be more than uh, well served enough with this approach. So I won't talk about Rix tonight. Again, I've talked about it several times already. Uh, watch, the, watch the videos, but I think uh, Rix uh, is really nice and Nix because they allow you to deal with this first aspect, uh, which is making sure that your pipeline is reproducible. And by making sure it's reproducible, you already ensure that it's quite robust. But I will talk about something a bit different tonight, um, which is uh, how to deal with errors and warnings, and specifically warnings, because errors, you know, there, there's already some things, maybe let me zoom in a little bit more. There's already some things that you can do, but maybe warnings uh, is a bit more problematic. So I have here this pipeline. Um, I load some packages, uh, I source some functions, I read some data. So this data, this is Eurostat data um, about planes and uh, numbers of passengers flying out and uh, to Luxembourg Airport. So I think there's probably one of these data sets for each country. Uh, in Luxembourg, we only have one airport, so it's just this one airport. But you have um, the same data set for, for France, for Germany, etc., for all member states. And so um, it's quite big data sets, uh, you know, by, by uh, let's say, by, um, by official statistics standards. So it's not big data, but it's still some data that, you know, takes a little bit of expertise to handle because the data as it is you cannot just use it you need to to clean it a bit it's not super complicated but you need to do it and that's what i do uh, over here i have this basic cleaning function that cleans the data then i have this record recordings functions that does some recordings and then i do some filtering and then i separate monthly data and quarterly data because the the, the data set contains monthly quarterly and annual data so it's all together so I, I write a function to split that, and then I make a plot, and then I even add that to a markdown file, but we're not even going to look at the markdown file, so it's, it's just an example. Anyways, um, if I run my pipeline, okay? So I'm using Nix, so I'm going into the Nix shell, so I'm dropping into this environment. It takes a bit of time, 
rest assured this is not because of Nix, this is because of my hard drive. My hard drive is quite slow um, and yeah, it takes a, a bit of time to load. Um, anyways, let me load targets and let me run my pipeline. So what this is going to do, I think it should skip everything, yeah. We, everything is up to date and um, so everything runs. Let's take a look at the plot, okay? Let's just take a look at the, pro at the plot. Uh, so monthly plot and we see this huge plot and of course we see the effect of COVID. So <laughs> these are passengers arriving at Luxembourg airport uh, or flying from Luxembourg Airport, I don't remember, doesn't matter. Uh, and of course, COVID, we see a, a huge uh, drop uh, in the data, right? So that's all nice and good. Um, let's take a look at the functions to create this, right? Because this is where, where, what I want to show you. Um, mm -hmm. So the first function over here, basic cleaning. So I select the columns that I need. And it's a data set in the wide format. So each column is um, defines a time period. So I pivot that, right, to make it tidy. And, and then I separate the columns because the first column is actually like four columns in one. Okay, so I separate that as well. And then I have my recodings. And what recodings does, it does nothing but uh, it just changes these codes to human readable data, to human readable labels, let's say. So for example, this code over here, lu e l l x D E E D D T, it's Berlin Tegel, okay? So, and so on and so forth, right? So, these are the names of airports. Um, so, that's just very basic stuff. Then I filter my data. So, because as I told you, the data set contains quarterly, monthly, and annual data. So, I need to filter on the date column the dates that contain a queue. These are quarterly data. So, this goes into the quarterly data set. And then the, the data sets that contain minus zero, one, those are monthly data because the format is year minus zero, one for January, zero, two for February and so on. Okay. So I need to filter with this regular expression and I get the monthly data and I didn't care about the annual data. So it's not here. And then I have my function that makes the plot. Okay. So very simple stuff, but now. Suppose that I mess up my regular expression, okay? So suppose I write something that is completely wrong, okay? So what is going to happen? I'm rerunning my pipeline, so it should pick up that I changed the uh, this function. So as you see, it rebuilds the monthly data and it rebuilds the plot. So fine, let's take a look at the plot. Maybe I don't need to type everything again because I already typed it. Now my plot is empty. Of course, it's empty because I'm filtering on something that does not exist, but it's not a bug. It's not an error. I don't get any error message. It's just that uh, my, um, it's just that my, my uh, filter is, produces an empty data set. So great. Uh, this can be very tricky to discover. This can really be a problem uh, if you have like a huge pipeline with many, many functions, it can be really difficult to detect where the problem is. Okay. So that's the first thing. A second thing I want to show you, uh, and maybe let me just rerun the pipeline again before, before I change. The second thing I want to show you, which is more obvious, but still I want to talk about it as well. So I rebuild my stuff. Great. It's working. Uh, let me just introduce some mistake somewhere. So for example, let me change this thing. Okay. Let me change this thing. So what is going to happen? Of course, I'm going to get an error, an error message. Okay. And it's going to try to rebuild this and it's going to say, well, passenger or passengers not found. So this is fairly easy uh, because I know it's the target recorded Avia, as you can see here, I know it's this one that was messed up. So fine, I, I know which function it is and I can like control F, look for passengers, look for this typo and, and deal with that. But sometimes, sometimes it's a bit more complicated. Sometimes it's a bit more complicated because sometimes what happens and it should happen now is okay, I don't have a typo, so it's going to work, but I do get something. I get this warning and it's telling me, hey, 
those NAs have been in, there, there's some NAs that have been introduced by coercion inside as numeric. So what's happening? The, the original passengers column is actually a string and the empty uh, string signifies uh, not a number or missing, right? Not available. And so when I use as numeric, so wh wh where in the cells where I have numbers, I get my numbers. In the cells where I have the empty string, I get an NA, and so I get this warning. And that's fine. That's great. I'm informed. No problems here. But sometimes you get these warnings, and you actually would like to be able to explicitly deal with them or to be able to be um, alerted in a more severe way. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So first of all, um, I'm going to uh, be here inside my terminal. So I'm here on the main branch and I'm going to check out the Chronicler branch. So Chronicler is a package that I wrote, I think I started like, last year? Last year or this year, I don't even remember. And, um, and it's a package that um, makes it possible to do something that I think is very useful, but I don't think I've ever made a video talking about, about it. So first of all, let me, let me destroy every object of the pipeline. And let me show you what changed. So my pipeline here didn't change much. The only difference is now I have, I'm sourcing these record functions. But the rest is almost the same. There is a little difference here. When I read this data set, I convert it to a chronicle object. But then the rest is almost the same. There is just, again, one difference here. This filter that I had before was a simple filter. Now there's this weird thing like bind record, record R filter. So I'm using R filter, etc. So that's the difference. But if I look at my functions, this is very different. Because now, this, I'm using by the record everywhere. And instead of select, I'm using R select. Instead of pivot longer, I'm using R pivot longer. Instead of separate, I'm using R separate, etc., etc. And I'm doing this everywhere. I'm doing this everywhere. And why am I doing that, you may ask? Well, because now the object, or rather, let me go back to the pipeline. This object here now, Avia raw, and then basic cleaning Avia, etc. So the object that, that flows in my pipeline, that object, it's not just a data set anymore. Uh, it's a data set plus something else that I'm going to show you. And this something else is actually very useful to me. And is, this is one of the reasons I wrote Chronicler was because I had to deal with these pipelines at work and I had these issues and Chronicler allows me to deal with that in a better way. So let me show you, let me run this. It's going to take some time because if you remember, there is a function that contains the, uh, the pivot wider uh, function, the, the basic cleaning one, pivots the data and it takes a bit of time to run. So bear with me. Um, in the meantime, a word from our sponsor. My sponsor is me. I wrote this book that tells you how to build reproducible analytical pipelines. It's available for free online. I will link it in the description. But if you want, you can buy it a physical copy from Amazon, right? And you can even buy an ebook version on LeanPub. Everything will be linked in the description. Great. Now, here we are. So, let me show you uh, what I mean by this object. Let me, first of all, read the plot. Let me show you the plot. Uh, sh it should show the same thing, so we get the same plot. Fine. Okay, so all these operations I've added on top of it didn't change the result. Now let's take a look, and for this let me load, uh, no, let me load Avia Monthly. So this is the object, Avia Monthly, is the object that I pass to the function that creates the plot. So this is essentially the cleaned data. So that there's every. So this is the data that is ready to get plot, plotted. Let me also load the Chronicler package. Chroni Chronicler package. Let me load that because I'm going to need it. And let me take a look at Avia Monthly. So Avia Monthly is a bit different. So it's not just a data set. So what is it? First of all, I get this message telling me that the value was computed successfully. I have my table 
and I have this word just so this is just a tibble so for now don't forget about just for now and then I have this little message here telling me that this is a, an object of type chronicle and I can retrieve the value so I can retrieve my data frame or my table with the pick function or I can read a log mm, read a log interesting let's let's read it so let's read the log of uh, it was avia monthly avia monthly so uh, we don't see much because I'm in the terminal and so it's not very good so we see these messages here what are these messages so first of all come the complete log okay as chronicle ran successfully so this is when I read the data, I pass the data to the function as chronicle to convert it to a chronicle. Then, okay, select, ran successfully. So the select, where I select my columns, ran successfully. The pivot longer ran successfully. The separate function ran successfully. The mutate, where I do all my recodings, ran successfully. The mutate, where I uh, recode some stuff, again, ran successfully. This thing ran successfully as well. As numeric passengers at the bottom here of, this, of the terminal. Again, uh, in our studio, I gotta say, this gets uh, shown much, much cleaner, uh, but in the terminal, it's not great. Um, select ran successfully. Deploy a filter ran successfully. Deploy a filter again with my regular expression ran successfully, etc., etc. Everything ran successfully. So in the end, I have this, this thing. Great, but I just don't have this thing. I have something else that is quite interesting. And for this, I can use the function check G. And I'm going to explain to you what G is. So G shows me something very interesting. It shows me all the operations from 1 to 14. It shows me the functions that run. And it shows me, actually, G, this thing here, it shows me the dim dimension of the data. So. When I read my, my data set and when I select the columns that I need, I have 2,142 rows and 322 columns. And then when I pivot, now I have this number of rows and I have three columns. And then I have three more columns after I separate, etc., etc. And now I filter, I lose a lot of rows and I keep only 9,000 rows. And then I filter again. And then I have this 6,000 rows. So. Why is that interesting? Let's go back to my cases from before. Let's go back to my functions, right? And let's say that I mess up, I mess up my uh, regular expression, okay? And let's run the pipeline again. So again, it, the pipeline will run. I won't get any error message or anything like that. My pipeline will run, but and again, if I try to read the plot, uh, monthly, monthly, plot is empty. But now, the difference now is that I can say, well, you know what? Let me check the dimensions of my data. And now I can see, oh, by the way, uh, yeah. Careful, when you're working with targets, you need to be careful. This is the data from before. I need to load, I need to load. Okay, above, ah, yeah, because I'm in the terminal, it's not great, not great, but anyway. So I cannot use all the keyboard shortcuts that I would like to, but anyway. I need to load it again, I need to be careful with that, I cannot forget it, but now I can see, oh, this filter eliminate, eliminates every row. It's this filter that is the culprit. It's the filter at step 11. The filter at step 11 just gets rid of everything. What is the filter? Wh which filter is it? Suppose I have 50 filters. So now here it would still be quite easy to just check in the code. Well, let me read the log. Read log. Avia monthly. And now I can check. It's this one. So this is 12, but actually it's 11, because remember the first line of the log, it's just complete log, right? So it's just uh, a line telling you that this is the log. Uh, maybe I should remove that now, because you wouldn't need to make this. You, 
because you can get confused, but this is the step 11. So I know it's this filter, and I know then that it's this regular expression that messed things up. So I can go back to here and I can correct that. But I can go even further uh, if I want to. Let me show you what happens. For, a, for First of all, let me show you what happens if I have a mistake. Okay, I have a mistake, I have a typo, I have something that is, ju it, it's just wrong, all right? And then I, I will go back to my warning. So I correct my I correct my filter, but I made a mistake in my recodings. Again, everything, so my wife is ordering stuff for Christmas. <laughs> so uh, everything runs, okay? Uh, the plot doesn't. The plot doesn't. Why? The plot doesn't run. And why didn't I get an error? Because I should like I should have an error here, right? Because there is a typo in the code. What is happening? Again, let's uh, take a look at my object. And let's read the log. Or maybe, yeah, let's read the log. Let's look, read the log first. So. Oh, so let's read the log. Oh, not okay. Select ran unsuccessfully. Pipeline failed upstream. Oh, so the problem is up. Pipeline failed upstream. Mutate didn't work either. Not okay. Mutate filter. Pipeline failed upstream. Pipeline failed upstream. Oh, this one ran, ran okay. Right? So, oh, here it is. Step nine. Mutate as numeric. Ran unsuccessfully with the following exception. Um, caused by error, passengers not found. So now I know exactly which step it is, okay? And again, for this example, you might think, well, before you knew as well which target was failing. This is true. But let me tell you, sometimes if you have like big pipelines using a lot of functions, it's not necessarily so obvious to see, uh, if you're not using Chronicle, it's not so obvious to see where things went wrong. Here, I know immediately, oh, I know it's this function, it's this step, here is the error message, and I can go back and deal with that, okay? So I think that's that's pretty pretty nice. But it's not it's not all. I can be very very strict uh, with my pipeline because now I'm going to show you actually how I I create these functions. So if I go back to my um, functions, right? I have all these weird things. I have R select over here, all right. I have R pivot longer. I have R separate. What the hell is that? So these functions, I have to make them, and I make them by running this script over here. Maybe I let, let me put this in full screen. So you see that filter, R filter, is actually deploy a filter, and I use the record function on it. And record is a function that comes from the chronicle uh, data uh, package. Sorry. And then you see G. This is the function dim. And dim gives you the number of rows and the number of columns. Remember before when I, I showed you the dimensions of the data as it was going through the pipeline? This is because I use G. I could use uh, dim. I could use any other function. So you could use, for example, I don't know, you could use head. And you would get the head of the data frame at each step. And also, you should note that Chronicler works with almost any function. There are some exceptions. And actually, I will probably go back to it during the holidays to, to fix that. But most of, of it should work with Chronicler. And so even if you are working with something else than a data frame, like let's say a, a regression model, for example, and you are passing this regression model through functions, well, you can also use here functions that will simply do something on that model. So so this G function, this dot G function can be something else, right? And my wife is still ordering stuff for Christmas. Anyway, this is uh, where you can choose the function that you want to be applied to the object. And then there's strict. So I'm not going to talk about diff because this is already starting to be a longer video, but this gives you the diff between the two objects. Very cool feature. But uh, strict is how strict Chronicler will be. So two will catch, um, let me, let two will catch only I don't remember now. So two, no, two will only catch errors. 
2 will only catch errors. But if I change that, so let me go with, so let me go in mutate. So you see mutate, I have strict one because strict one means it will, um, no, sorry. Strict one means it will only catch errors. Strict two means it will catch errors and warnings. So remember the warning that I get, uh, remember the warning that I get when I run there it is, when I run as numeric. With strict one, this I just get this message, it gets ignored, the pipeline continues, and I get my results. But if I but you know, if I want to be strict, sometimes sometimes it's better if warnings were errors. And if I, I really got an error message that would force me to deal with this warning. So I can use strict two. So now warnings will be considered as being errors. Okay? Which means that if I run my pipeline now, and for this now, I need actually to destroy everything because the targets is not monitoring these functions. So if I change these functions and if I try to run my pipeline, targets will say, well, everything is fine. Uh, just no need to run anything. So I, I need to really destroy everything because targets is not aware of these functions. So I will run everything. But now what is going to happen is, again, my pipeline is going to run. Because, again, Chronicler, if something fails, I, I, I still get an object. I, I still get something. It's just that this something is an object called a nothing. And I will show you that now. But I st And this nothing just flows through the pipeline, and at the end I get nothing. So I know something went wrong. But what is going to happen is that I'm going to, because I have this nothing now, I know, okay, something went wrong, all right? And now the error, the error message that is here is because of my plot, because my plot doesn't know how to handle a an object of class maybe. So uh, a, a chronicler object, a chronicle object is, a cro an ob is an object that inherits from a maybe. But let's look, let's look at, uh, at Avia monthly. Let's, let's read or let's load it um, Avia. So I, I look at Avia Monthly, okay? I don't have my plot. I look at Avia Monthly. What, what is happening? So as I told you, I have an object that is a nothing. And it flows through. So my pipeline actually is successful. The, the only thing that, that messes up is uh, my, my plot, because my, my ggplot doesn't know how to plot a nothing. But everything runs. But I have this nothing now. And I know, oh, something went wrong. Okay, something went wrong in my pipeline. What went wrong? Okay, I don't know, but I can look at the log, right? I can look at the log. Ah, crap. I have this keyboard that sometimes... Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, so I look, uh, mutate, upstream, 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 and now here it is. Oh, now I know what's happening. I have this as mutate. And I got this warning, and these NAs were introduced by coercion. And because I used strict equal to, this warning is basically uh, treated as an error. So even, th even though in this particular example it would do something, even though here it would do something, it, I would, for example, get my, my so it, I would get my data clean, cleaned, so my, my uh, empty strings would be, would be NAs, if I want it to, if I want to be strict, I can upgrade this warning to an error, forcing me to really look into the data and to really make sure that I'm dealing uh, with this uh, NAs properly. Here, in this case, what I can do is I can go back uh, because I know that this is not a problem. I can go back here and I can change this to one again. But I, I could say, well, no, I, I really want these warnings to be errors. And what you could do you know, before this filter, where when I filtered my, my data frame, it was empty, right? Uh, what I also did at work is I actually rewrote filter. So I have a uh, uh, have wrapper around filter that I, I think I called strict filter, something like that. And basically what it does is it returns a warning if the resulting data frame is empty. And then I use it with Chronicler and I use strict to, to make this warning an error. And so basically, when I use strict filter, I get this warning, 
And because I use it here, I get this error and it forces me to actually look and make sure that my filter is correct. So this is how I use Chronicler, which is again, a package that I wrote that is on CRAN. There's a website, I will link it as well into the description. You can read the, the website for use cases. Um, there are some things that I need to work out because uh, it doesn't handle everything. Uh, so I, I, I have some ideas about how to deal with that. But basically for pipelines like this, where you're working with uh, tidyverse functions to clean data, it works very well. And I've been using that in production uh, for a year now or more than a year now. Yeah, it's been more than a year. I, I worked on it less for the first time. I think the first version was published in May last year. And um, and it's great. And it's great. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm the only person on earth using it, but I think it's really nice. Uh, so maybe take a look at it. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, any feedback, uh, let me know. Uh, and uh, yeah, see ya.